the new hot product from Ciro 3D, the TAC-10 light cannons. It seems like everybody's throwing these on their bikes, but do they work on bikes with lower hard fairings? The short answer is yes, they do. How will they look? And how are these things installed? That's what we're gonna find out in this video. So these things have been popping up all over on YouTube. Installs, my whole sub list is just TAC-10 light cannon videos. I'm excited to put these on my bike and that's what we're gonna do in this video. Oh, we're also gonna go with yellow lenses. And the idea behind the yellow lenses is white is great for extra visibility, but Yellow lenses help you see better in the rain and fog where the white lights would kind of reflect off of the moisture in the air. The yellow lights will cut through it. But if I'm being honest, the yellow lenses are just gonna look cool. So, I mean, that's why I went that route. Let's get over to the tabletop view, find out what's in the box real quick, and then we'll work on the installation here. All right, here we go. Zero full color instructions. A little bit of the mounting hardware here. Your lights, these are heavy. That is, that is some well-made heavy duty construction right there on these lights. And then in this particular kit, we get our crash bar clamps. Again, these are no joke. They are serious heavy duty pieces of metal. some bolts and an Allen wrench, wire harness, and a package of miscellaneous. All these bolts have Loctite on them already, so you're good to go there. Now for our installation over here, we are gonna use the switch. So Ciro sent me the Evil Iron Customs switch here that you can get off of their website. And we're doing the yellow lenses because, you know, they're cool. All right, let's get over to the bike and see if we can get these things installed in a timely fashion. Now, of course, like everything on the road glide, we need to remove the outer fairing. I've got videos showing how to do this. We're gonna speed it up for this video. It's gonna be real time for me, but not for you, so. What I'd like to see, I want somebody to invent me a mount that can mount where the signal lights are. And it can mount sort of right below the signal lights. Now this is basically exactly what they have for the mounting bracket for Batwing fairings, but they don't do it for the road glide fairing yet anyways. Fingers crossed, if somebody can come up with that for me, I'll relocate these as soon as I can get my hands on a bracket like that. So let me know. Also, I wanna change out my bullet housings on my turn signals to black. So if anybody has an extra set laying around, they might wanna sell, look me up. All right, now with the fairing removed, we're gonna to have to pull the headlight out as well. I might as well do that now. There are like three different ways to run these things. You can run it either through the ignition switch. So as soon as you turn the ignition switch, these lights are on with everything else. You can also wire it to your high beam. So when you turn your high beam on, these lights come on. I'm putting in a dedicated switch. There's videos out there that'll show you how to wire it up the different ways if you're interested in. I'm just gonna focus on the way we're doing it. For this project is not to overcomplicate things, but I did wanna let you know that there are the, the three options when wiring these up. All right, so now we basically need to figure out where we want to mount these lights and all that, and then we'll go from there, right? Now we're just back over here at the table for a minute because 
we need to do some kind of pre-assembly here. You want to take each of your brackets first of all. We want to insert the M8 carriage bolt. That's the one with the little square bit up towards the head of the bolt. Uh, we want to insert that into the bracket first because once we have the lights attached to these brackets, there's no way you're getting this bolt in or out of there. So that's going to be your first step. So we're going to insert our rubber washer or bushing if you call it, if you want to call it that. They go in first and then you've got the star washer. Hold those into place. That is tight. It's kind of a lot trying to hold all this stuff together. <laughs> Keep it together, Drew. Oh, I'm about to work up a sweat over here. Whew. We're close. Just trying to get everything lined up properly. Now we'll take a flat washer and one of your bolts and get those started in. I'm not tightening any of this stuff down yet. Whew, I think we got it. Well, we got the first one anyways. Repeat on the other side, it's the only way. Frustrating part. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't enjoy this part. You know what though? The next time you do it, if you were just gonna do this for a living, it would be easy. And the more you know how to install, really the more valuable you are to Ciro. Maybe get a gig out on the road going to the rallies doing installs, eh? I've actually considered it. I think that would be fun. If I could afford the time off of work. And that concludes the pre-assembly portion of our video. You may find that you want to adjust your lowers just a little bit. And to do that, you need to remove the door on the front of the lower and then use an 11 millimeter socket to remove the bolt behind the cover. So once this door is off inside here, there's an 11 millimeter bolt. We can just undo that. Once that's off, this outer cover just pulls right off of here with a little bit of wiggling. There's a plastic tab right here at the bottom of this cover. And there's a little teeny slit right here that that tab fits into. Once you have that off, there's two more 11 millimeter nuts. And we can just loosen them. We don't actually have to remove this clamp. And hopefully that'll give us enough yeah, there we go. We want to make sure that this cover will still fit on. We're not too close to the mounting bracket for the fairing. I think that will be all right. So hopefully that'll give us a little bit of extra clearance through here for these mounts. I'm really trying to decide right now where I want these lights to be mounted. And that's kind of my current struggle. I feel like you could kind of go on the inside of the fairing here. You could even go super low if you wanted. Really, the world is your oyster and you can do, you can do whatever you want. It's just deciding what you want. All right, so there's plenty of different ways you could configure these lights and I'm trying to figure out placement where I'm gonna want them and things like that. Everything could kind of be put together any way you want. The brackets can be flipped around if you wanna redo the brackets on the lights and all that. So there definitely is possibilities. It's just gonna take trial and error and playing with different concepts and ideas on how you want to have them mounted, all right? So I'm gonna kind of go with this just basic, what I came up with right now. I can always move things later on. I'll just try not to too permanently do any of the wiring, I guess, uh, to make sure I've got enough slack where I can adjust things and move them if I want to later on. I think I figured out how I wanna have them mounted now. I'm gonna have them kind of on the inside a bit. They do block a bit of the lower fairing, but I think I like the look of it there and it's not protruding from the bike, which is nice. I don't have to worry about catching them on anything because they are pretty good size. That's one thing that I noticed that I didn't really realize when I was watching other videos is just how big these things are. They are very beefy. They're freaking monstrous, really tough looking lights. So I just kind of have it mocked up on this side so far. 
I'm going to go ahead and kind of do the same thing on the other side, I think. But first, I might just hook up the halo just to kind of get an idea of how it's going to look. So here you've got your wiring harness from Ciro. You've got the two ends that go to your lights. And then you've got this one end that will go to the power, however you're going to power it. One of the three ways that I told you earlier. And then this is just for the halo portion of the lights. And that just plugs in up here on top for the road glide anyways. And essentially the halo is always going to be on. So that's just a given. Just a hot tip for you. If you are installing these on your bike and you have lowers like I do, if you have your own three millimeter Allen wrench, I highly suggest using your own because it's probably longer. And getting to the inside screw on the clamp where you're really close to the lower fairing, having the longer Allen wrench makes your life way, way easier. All right, well, let's get these things wired up and then we're gonna swap out the lenses for the yellow ones to get our final look. Ideally, I think I should have done that ahead of time, like at the table before I put everything together, but I think, I think there's a workaround, so we'll get to that. They're not gonna be super easy to swap out. Uh, it's gonna be one of those things where you're gonna have to kind of decide what you want and then pretty much leave it because I don't think you're gonna wanna be switching back and forth. But we'll get to that in a little bit. The idea is we're gonna to try to run it along the lower part of the crash bar, up the down tube. It's always fun trying to show you guys how I do this. And then we're running it in right here. This is the wire. It runs in into the bike there into the center of the fairing. And we came out right here. This is behind the headlight area, right there. That's the idea so far. Next, we need to remove the bezel for the speedometer and clock cluster thingy. To get this off, we've got a screw on both sides here. We need to just remove this plastic bezel here. This is actually an aftermarket one that I got online because uh, the last one was chrome and I broke it. These can be a little bit tricky to get off. What you're gonna wanna do is turn your switch all the way over like that. And then there's a tab at the bottom here. You need to push that in and lift it up slightly and pull this out. But be careful because that tab is the part that breaks very easily. Once this bezel is off and the two screws are out, we'll proceed from there. Mine's gonna be a bit different than yours probably because I've got the Dakota Digital gauges in here, but you just need to basically pop off the factory harness on stock gauges. And there's another one back here, just a dummy plug down here at the bottom. And then I have these. These are specific to the Dakota Digital gauges. Also, if it's the first time you have this off, there'll be a plug in here it is very hard to get out because that one plugs in upside down for some reason and you can't, it's very hard to get your finger in there to release the clip. So I've pretty much just always left that one disconnected. By the way, I still have no idea what either of those plugs are even for. And now is the part of the video where I need to run to the parts store because I don't have what I need. What I wanna do is get the connectors that go on the end of the wires for this switch here that will plug into here. So it's the spade, the spade bit connector dealies. Gosh, I feel like I should have some of those, but I don't think I do. All right, so next you need to decide, I mean, of course, obviously, you need to decide where you want this switch. You can either put it on this side or this side, and then you can also move this switch anywhere in this housing. So I think I'm gonna put it on the left side, but I want it on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and relocate this switch quick. I think that should be pretty easy to do. And then I'm gonna pop this out with the two screws on the back and replace it with this. Now for the fun part, or the part I should say that is not gonna be fun at all. We need to get this wire all the way back through here out the console, the opening on the console. And it is gonna be a bit of a challenge. I think our best bet will be to run a fish tape down through here. Make sure we've got this routed sort of how we want it, or as best we can. 
And I'm just going to use electrical tape, tape around these plugs as skinny as, skinny as I possibly can. Well, I can't find more electrical tape. I don't know why, because I should have plenty, but we're going to see if this is enough to get it pulled through. See it. Can I reach it? Oh, oh yeah. That actually kind of worked. Well, I mean, it did work. It didn't work quite the way I wanted it to. With that done, we just need to connect the each wire harness together. There's not a certain side, it doesn't matter. Red to red, white to white, black to black. And now we should be able to see if our switch works. So those are just our halos. And there's the actual lights. So far, so good. All right, now I'll have to put the whole dash and everything put back together. But what we want to do next is swap out the yellow lenses quick. To swap in the lenses, we're going to need the three millimeter Allen wrench again. And I feel like your best bet is going to be just to go ahead and remove the light from the housing or from the mount. There are four of these little three millimeter screws on the back side of the light. If you had a bit for a bit driver that was three millimeter hex bit, he'd be even, he'd be in even better shape. But with those screws removed, we can pop out our lens. We'll put our yellow lens in. They come with their own gasket and it just gets pushed back in there. I also want to make sure that the zero lettering is sort of upwards as much as we can because I've got this, I've got this mount at kind of a goofy angle. So, I mean, it is what it is. It's not going to be perfect for this. It's just not going to be perfect for the way I have it set up. All right, well, the bike is totally put back together. We are ready to roll. And I'm going to get you some shots riding at night so you can see these lights in action. But I wanted to touch on something very important. And I know Steve from Sick Baggers said the same thing. These lights are incredibly bright. And if you're going to own them, it's your responsibility to make sure that they're pointed right. You do not want to be blinding other drivers and other riders on the road with these lights. So if you're going to have them on on the highway or back roads or anything like that, please make sure that they're pointed well and they're not going to affect any other drivers. That would be very, very dangerous. And yeah, these things are incredibly powerful. Let's get out, get some night shots, see how these lights look at night, on, off different things like that, different scenarios. We'll get some close-ups and we'll be good to go.
Well, there you go, guys. The TAC-10 light cannons on the Road Glide with lower fairings. We got them installed on the Switch. They look great. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I think it's a cool addition. Having the yellow lenses just kind of sets it a bit apart, kind of gives it that Baja look, I guess, that people are going for. I just wanted to see what the yellow would look like against the superior blue, and I'm pretty happy with it. So I can always switch back to the clear lenses if I want to, but I'm gonna roll like this for a while, I think, and see how it goes. Stay safe out there as always. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll catch you next time right here on Touring Midwest.